In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add a social locker to your content, meaning people have to take an action on social media to view your content. In the example we're doing, we have a blog post that normally has code snippets on it. The code snippets look like this, these boxes with code, and I have locked two of them on this blog post. I've locked this one, and I've locked this one. And now the visitor has to either click like or tweet to unlock the content. And a few things to note, you have the same lock on multiple spots on the page, just like you see here. So I could lock out all the code blocks if I wanted, or the entire post, or just certain paragraphs, and so on and so forth. It's gonna like this page, click to confirm. This is not my WP Learn Lab page because I did that in the tutorial itself. In this intro, I have to use a different one of my Facebook groups for Facebook pages, which is called Mindful Meditations. Click on like, and that will unlock these things. You could have any Facebook page you want. It doesn't have to be yours. But ideally, it will be yours because then you get the benefit. And that's how the social locker works. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set it all up. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you have not done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get back to this tutorial by going into the dashboard. The first thing we want to do is go to plugins and then add new and then look up. One press social locker. This is not the only social locking plugin available. This is just one that I've used and it works really well. And in addition to locking content based on social interaction, like a Facebook share or a Twitter tweet, you can also lock it based on an opt-in. So people have to submit their email address to see the content. That's what the second plugin on the right is for, created by the same people. I'm going to create a different video for this one so you can lock based on email address submission, not just social sharing. So this video is about social sharing. So for that, we want to install this one right here. I'm going to click on install now. If you're installing this on a live site, you should always back up your site first. If you need a tutorial for backing up your site, check out that one right up there. It'll help you get backed up and make sure you have something to restore to if something goes wrong. Then click on activate. In the description, I've also linked to the social locker page in the repository, which you can see right here. And there is a premium version to this plugin. The free version is what we're going to use in this video, but the premium version allows you a lot more stuff. And you can check out the premium version by clicking on this link here. And all the data on this page is mostly the free version. There's some premium version stuff like right here. But most of the information on this page I've linked to is the free version that we're using today. So let's head back into the website. On this page, this is the Social Locker Go Premium page. It gives you information about the Social Locker Premium version. We're not going to worry about that right now. Let's click on New Locker on the left under the Social Locker menu. And let's add a Social Locker by clicking on Create Item. And let's call this uh, Blog Post Social Lock. This is the header. This is content that the people on your site will see. This content is locked. I'm going to add some more because it is so valuable. Please support us. Use one of the buttons below to unlock the content, to unlock this valuable content. So these are the messages that the people are gonna see that come to your site. For the theme, we can choose different themes here. Well, two, starter and secrets, three more are premium, and you can see what they look like right down below. We see the preview down here. So if I change this to starter, Starter looks like that. Looks pretty much the same. Secrets adds some border, some inlay. Much crisper, the secret I find. We can do full or classic, so the content on the site will be completely covered. And we'll show you how this looks in just a minute. You can also choose transparency, so some of the content is visible behind. You can see that here. You can change the position, top position. You can have it scroll down. This doesn't have a preview, but as you scroll down, you can read the content behind it, but you don't see it properly. It gets grayed out a little bit, and you have to click on the social locking options or unlocking options to see it all. This is the one I would prefer, but it's on the premium version only, because I guess a lot of other people prefer that too. And that is when the content behind is grayed out. So I'm gonna choose transparency for now. We'll change it to full as well, and we'll see how that looks. Middle position, I'm happy with that. Down here, we want to have a Facebook turned on, and we add a Facebook page. This is the page they have to like to unlock the content. And there's Twitter, the URL to tweet. We can use the URL of the blog post. So if we are going to add this to a specific post, which we are, let's just go to the website, go to the blog. Let's just use this most recent one here, and go to 
uh, actually copy the URL right here. This is on local. It's just a staging site for my website, so it's not a real link. I don't want them to tweet, but it'll work for this example. You paste the link of whatever the blog post is to here. You could also have this link to a more generic page that kind of gives people a call to action to join your blog or join your community or something, and then have that tweeted out from every single locker. Whereas tweeting a specific URL like this only makes sense if the locker is on this blog post, which it will be in this example. But if you have it on many, I'm going to consider having a different URL here. You can add a message right here. Check out this great blog post. Here you can choose to check whether the user actually tweeted it or not, because they can click on it and then the plugin registers someone's clicked, and then you can have it assume they tweeted it, or you can have this confirm they tweeted it. So you can choose to have that on or off, it's up to you. I'm just gonna choose off. If you wanna turn it on, it does require creating a Twitter app. There's a lot of resources online to help you create that, it's not very hard, but that's what's required to double check if someone tweeted it. And this is the button name here, tweet, and that's good enough for me. So those are the two options we have for the free version. We also have the premium version options, Facebook share, Twitter follow, YouTube subscribe, and LinkedIn share. And we also have counters that we can turn on and off. The counter appears when you hover over the button. In this case, I turn it off, so it just shows tweet or like. I turn the counters on, and then it shows the numbers beside it. So this has not been tweeted yet, so it doesn't have any numbers here, but this page has been liked, so it has some like numbers here, so that's great. If you're concerned about GDPR, we have a GDPR consent checkbox on the left-hand side. We can turn that on. The checkbox will appear where you choose, top or bottom, and it looks like this. I agree with terms of use and privacy policy. So you can have that on or off. Clearly, if you have that on, you get less people sharing. But you'll be covered, hopefully. As long as your terms of use and privacy policy are well-written, you'll be covered. You could also go the way of more implied consent, not a specific consent. So if I turn off this checkbox and turn on the footer reference, we have just here by clicking these buttons, you agree. So basically, we're forcing you to agree. You don't have a checkbox to click, but you also may not read this. You might just gloss over this and click the button and not even know that you're agreeing to this. So that checkbox is more coverage, but this would work to some extent. We can also choose to have batch unlocking, which means we can apply our locker to all our posts at the same time. So you can set that up by clicking here. In the first tab here, we can specify if we're skipping anything. So we can choose to exclude posts by adding their IDs here. We can exclude categories by adding the category IDs here. We can also specify the number of paragraphs that are shown above the locker before the locker appears. So in this case, we have one. And if we go down to the example, here it shows the one paragraph in the locker down below. So I'm gonna keep it as one. And you can also choose the post type to lock if you wanted to choose specific post types. So you can do that here. You can use a more tag for locking. So any post where you add the more tag in the editor, in the classic editor, the more tag looks like this. We'll look at it in a minute in the Gutenberg editor as well. But you add the more tag, anything beyond the more tag is gonna be locked. So you can do that manually. You can exclude posts where that does not apply. And if you do not add a more tag, then it doesn't apply either. You can also wrap the content with CSS selectors and only that content will be locked. So if you have three or four paragraphs that are really the most important of the post, you might just want to lock those. You can do that with a CSS selector. But for now, let's just see what this looks like. We're going to click on cancel. I'm going to click here to copy the short code. And I'm going to make sure I click on publish so that it's actually published. And I'm going to go to our post right here, click on edit post, and then we paste in our short code. So I'm going to add a new short code block, paste it in, and now this area, wherever you put the shortcode block, is where the locker is going to appear. Whatever you content you wrap the shortcode around is going to be, in this case, a little bit lighter because we chose the transparency option. So first, let's put it right here. And you'll see what that looks like. Update the page. Let's go back to the post. And we see our locker right here. It overlaps a bit with the content because it's bigger than the content, but it just stays right there and all your content is visible as normal. So let's split it up now. So let's just take the second half. So we have the first set of square brackets in one short code. And the second part we'll put down here in another short code block. Let's paste that right there. Update. Come back out here, refresh. And now we see this part is lighter. 
but it's still very readable. So it, it's probably not ideal to choose the transparency option. If we go back to our item, this is our shortcode locker that we just created. If you left this editor already for the shortcode locker, you can go back to all lockers under social locker and then choose the one that you created. In our case, blog post social lock, click on edit, and we can choose full or classic. Those are the two options we have for the free version. The transparent, which we see here, and full or classic, when it refresh, that's what we're gonna see now. And we see that content is completely gone. And this is likely the option you're gonna choose for your site. On this blog post, we have code snippets. So if you wanted to be really tricky, you could just make the code snippets disappear. So let's just wrap this around a code snippet box like that. Move this one down, it's gonna cut it. It's kind of a pain to move in Gutenberg, these things. It's gonna add a new one, put the short code here, update. So this is our first code block, which is this one right here. I can't highlight it, but it's this one right here. Now if I refresh, it's gonna be gone and replaced by a content locker, which we can see here. You probably wanna change this message. If you do it this way, you could say something like, this code is blocked or locked. All you have to do to unlock it is like or share, and you can have all the code for free. And you plop this on top of all the code segments because you can use the short code more than once on a page. So if we went down here, let's copy this and do this on the second one. Second code block, copy this one. Put it right there, update. And now this second code block right here under function that redirects users is gonna be blocked as well. So now we have two locks. You use the same lock, like I said, multiple times on a page. And we could apply this content lock to the other ones as well, other code blocks on here, which provides great incentive for people to only like and share. That's all it takes in this case is liking and sharing. And they probably want the code because it makes their life easier and their work faster. So this would be a great way to provide an incentive for them to like and share. It's great for your website because they're liking and sharing. It's great for them because they get the reward in this case, which is the code, and that's the value that we're providing. And when we click on like, it opens this box and click to confirm, and it shows which page you want to like, and we like that page, and it's unlocked, just like that. And it unlocks both of them. So it unlocks each one because we have liked the page. If I refresh now, it has been cookied, so it does not put the locker back. And if you use the Twitter option, it's just like the Facebook option, only instead of liking a page, you tweet something out. And if you have it set so it verifies right down here, so it double checks that they actually tweeted it, that would be of greater benefit to your site because it makes sure they tweeted it. But it's also one more hurdle that's setting in the way of having someone actually unlock the content. Another thing you wanna do, or don't wanna do, is you don't wanna content lock everything on your site because then people will get there and they're like, what's this? I can't see anything, I have to unlock it. I don't even know who this guy or girl is, so why would I wanna do that? And search engines also don't come to your site and unlock these things. You're not gonna get a tweet from Google every three seconds as they crawl your site. They're just not gonna see the content. If they can't see the content, they can't index it. They don't index it, you don't get search traffic. So you wanna make sure that you use the locker on very important things. Even if I was locking the code on my site, which I'm not, but if I was, at least not right now, I might do it in the future. But if I was doing it now, I wouldn't do it on every single code block on the entire website. I do it on some of them. I pick the most popular posts based on Google Analytics and then maybe block just one of the code blocks on that post because less is more in this case. If you like that and you find it valuable, make sure you check out this video right here, which is the opt-in locker for content. Instead of using social for locking, you're using an email address. So you're collecting email addresses to have people unlock the content, same idea, but different benefits because you can grow your mailing list. So check out that tutorial if you want to set that up. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from the WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.